Hello, my Likens. Welcome to a brand new episode of Anne's Morning, the podcast that used to be only a newsletter and now occasionally, occasionally is um, both a newsletter and a podcast. And today it's mainly a podcast. That was convoluted, sorry. Um, so today I'm going to, as the title suggests, tell you about my the books I've been reading during 2023. So, um, without further ado, I'm just going to dive into it. Uh, first, my boyfriend uh, said, oh, um, do you know that the TV show Shadow and Bone Half of it is inspired by by a duology of books I think you would enjoy and maybe laugh with a bit and like maybe have a good time because it may be a bit cringy and all, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so he gifted me a copy of Six of Crows and a year later, now I read almost everything the author Lee Bardugo has ever written. <laughs> so I loved it. Uh, I loved Six of Crows and Kruger Kingdom, which is the uh, sequel. Yeah, you're supposed to read first the Salomon Bond trilogy, but, but I did it later uh, because, um, yeah, uh, he uh, gave me first um, six of course because he thought I would prefer it and I do and it didn't have a really big impact on on my reading experience um, reading next the Salomon trilogy but yeah yeah I absolutely prefer it uh, six of course and crooked kingdom it's about as I've read somewhere I think it was Tumblr it's about a group of teenagers who do crimes and don't know how to say I love you and I think that's very apt there's uh, magic there's a heist there's several heists uh, I love heists I love uh, found family I love uh, how Lee Bardugo makes uh, the characters interact, how they are um, characterized. Uh, I absolutely recommend it. Uh, also, anything that involves um, annoying rich people, even in fantasy, usually appeals to me, so that helps. Uh, yeah, then the Shadowmon trilogy, which is more, um, it's a bit more YA, although Six of Crows is too, but uh, Shadow and Bone is a bit more. And it's more magical, magical, uh, although it's the same, it's the same world. Uh, in fact, this is called the Grisaverse. Um, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. Uh, later, as I've noticed I've been doing last year, I went from fantasy to poetry. So uh, I read Kevin Cantor's Please Come Off book, um, which is absolutely delightful. And I would highly recommend it if you're into um, theater and drama devices because uh, the author does does a great job of taking those tools uh, and writing poems um, through them uh, with them like um, there are poems that are castings there are poems that are whole scenes uh, it's it's amazing uh, also it's pretty much about the author uh, personal experience with gender, uh, being a non-binary human, and sexuality is uh, in being queer, and uh, some experiences of sexual assault. So um, beware of that if you go into it. 
yeah, I get with the poetry later and I read uh, my friends Nayar Crespo Sanchez's Ixeomo, uh, which is his second poem collection and it's so cool that I can talk about my friends' um, work. This is so cool. It's poetry, but it's um, heav heavily informed by um, philosophy. Uh, Nayar studied uh, philosophy. Um, didn't finish, but I feel that's a very <laughs> philosopher thing to do. Not finish your career. <laughs> Or interrupting it, at least. Um, yeah, Exeomo. It's an amazing book. It's only in Spanish for now, but I absolutely recommend it if you are fluent. In reading Spanish, uh, it's amazingly written. The um, influences are absolutely top. And um, the way he brings uh, pop culture into the poems, like... Um, music bands and other books in uh, yeah I think it's absolutely delightful then uh, more poetry Amor y Pan by Paula Melchor uh, this is also only in Spanish the title is uh, Love and Breath and it's a poem collection that absolutely destroyed me I loved it for it um, it's it's basically about uh, food, who you eat your food with, um, who uh, creates and keeps the recipes, um, who is not there to uh, to eat with you at the table. Uh, also, um, the last poem of the collection, uh, it's dedicated to the author's ex-boyfriend and it makes you reframe the whole collection. Um, oh, I don't want to spoil it in case you read it. I loved it, absolutely. Later, another Spanish poem collection only available in Spanish for now, Desde las Gradas eh, by Juan P. Sánchez López. This I also loved, maybe not, not as much as my friend Victor did, uh, who's the one who recommended this book to me, but I, I loved it anyway. This uh, has a lot of talk about masculinity, mm, what that means for a man who is not um, masculine as the as society um, asks him to be, and also being queer, being gay. Uh, there are some absolutely beautiful and heartbreaking references to Lorca, the also Spanish poet. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Then I read a couple of comic books because my boyfriend, uh, alongside another dude, do, um, how do I say it in English? Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, a series of talks um, with comic authors from time to time, like two or three times a year. Those are my cats uh, fighting each other a little bit. I'm, I'm letting them for now because they are only having a bit of fun and doing a bit of cardio. So don't worry if you hear them. They are safe and if they start hurting each other, I will stop them. Rest assured. Okay, so I read uh, Elisa Riera's comic books because uh, I wanted to be like ready for for her talk. And her first one is El Futuro es Brillante. I'm not sure if it's translated, but if it's not, it may be in the near future. Um, it will be something like Future is Brilliant or Bright. Um, and this is um, autobiographical retelling of her experience in a romantic relationship with a man that mm, one of those man babies that don't have any um, emotional maturity or responsibility <laughs> that kind of dude um, 
this is kind of a uh, uh, revenge in in comic book form. <laughs> also very gentle. Uh, I don't think Elisa wants anything other for this dude than to grow and mature, mature as a human. And that's where one of the cats uh, running away. It's okay. Later, Elisa Riera wrote Un Alao I Am Shanghai, which would be um, a laowai in Shanghai. Uh, laowai is Chinese for foreigner. Um, and this is about her experience um, living kind of long periods of time in China and the whole cultural shock uh, between her um, Spanish upbringing and uh, Chinese culture. Then I read Adanonada, un drama transgénero by Angelo Nestore. I don't know if this one is translated to English, but uh, I'm pretty sure there is um, an anthology with some of Angelo Nestore's poems, uh, and there might be some of this book, I'm, I'm sure, in there. Uh, so this one, like Kevin Cantor's collection, has some theater tools to talk about masculinity, uh, how to be a human in this world who cannot comply with um, the gender mandates and being non-binary, um, how can then your relationship to your family be uh, when they don't yet uh, understand. Also, um, queerness, desire, the body. Mm, yeah, it's really cool. Then I read more Lee Bardugo books, uh, King of Scars and its sequel, Rule of Wolves, that's also from the Grisaverse, and I ended up loving it more than I expected. Um, yeah, one of the um, uh, narrators is Sojan Nasialensky, who I knew from Shadow and Bone, and she's basically a bastard, and uh, I, I kind of hated her. But here, when I um, kind of saw her thinking and living <laughs> in her own words, oh, I, I saw myself in her in that... Um, in that feeling of having to control everything around you yourself. Yeah, uh, so it was an amazing experience. Later I read another Angelo Nestore. It was Actos Impuros, again, well, impure acts. Again, with a lot of talk about gender, sexuality, desire. I think it was here there was a poem about looking at boys at the gym and it was quite sexy and beautiful. <laughs> then I jumped again back into the fantasy wagon. I started the Legendborn Cycle um, series by Tracy Dion and I absolutely loved it. Uh, this this is such a cool story. The, the premise is it so um, ingenious. So um, this is about well, the first book is called Legendborn, the second Black Market, and I think next year, yeah, next year we get the third one. And there will be another after that, which I'm very th thankful for because uh, I loved this. So um, this series is about a 16-year-old girl called uh, Brianna, Bri. Uh, the Brie Hive, <laughs> it's called the, um, the fandom, and she, she's a black girl from Carolina, and at the beginning of the book she lost her mother in a traffic accident, uh, um, since she wants to um, a bit like run away from home and change, um, how do you say, scenography? No. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, go someplace else um, happens when you have a traumatic 
experience, right? So she starts early university and surprise, <laughs> she starts thinking her mother's death may have something to do with a secret society she discovers in campus, uh, which are basically the descendants of King Arthur and his round table. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's absolutely amazing. So uh, she just uh, infiltrates this uh, old money rich white boy uh, secret society and wrecks havoc on it. And I absolutely recommend it. It's um, it's fun. It's um, full of rights, full anger, and and it's. Uh, very critical of the institutions and its um, and their uh, bias, their racism. Uh, yeah, I loved it, but let's keep go. Let's keep going. I uh, later read another poem collection, Alejandro Palomas's "Y un después." I'm pretty sure that this is only in Spanish too. Uh, the title would be in English, and uh, later. Yeah, this is basically, um, strangely, uh, curiously, about um, the author, the author's life right after his mother passes and how he tries to keep this love in his life and in himself somehow without her mother actually being there to give it. Um, it's a sore book. Um, and it's devastating, but it's super beautiful too. Then, No Vinia Cercane by Gata Katana. This is a posthumous collection from Spanish poet, rapper, Gata Katana. Yeah, she didn't have the chance to publish these last manuscripts, so uh, her family and editors did. And the title would be I Didn't Come to Be Flesh. Which I think it's super pertinent. Um, if you can read anything by her in English, I recommend it. It's uh, basically contemporary feminism, uh, grappling with having to leave your town for fucking Madrid, which is where you have to go to work and, and yeah, <laughs> have things happen, have things happening around you. Okay, later I read a poetry anthology uh, that is only in Spanish too, Blanco Nuclear, which is a compilation of poetry by gay and lesbian writers, uh, <coughs> Spanish. And I loved part of this. Uh, I was really happy to read again texts by Chus Garcia. Uh, I love him that uh, great um, like covered in glitter I, I absolutely love it uh, on the other hand I, I just skipped um, portions of the book because some of these dudes there were like two or three dudes that talked about in their poems they, that talked about um, having sex with um, young boys and I, I do not enjoy that no not at all then i wanted to read something punk uh, so uh, i thought eh, it's time to start reading leopoldo maria panero which is a pretty big deal in spain but i haven't read um, more than a few poems in the internet and so on but never a whole book so I took this, um, Escribir como escupir, uh, which would be to write like spitting, writing like spitting, something like that. <laughs> it's a very punk, indeed, uh, book and title. It's one of his last. If you want to read something absolutely um, critical, and disdainful to our academy and academical writing and, and the people who 
get to say what is good and what is bad in poetry, this is um, exactly that. It's pretty awesome. Then I read my first Elizabeth Duval book. Uh, she's a Spanish writer. She's super young <laughs> compared to me. I'm I'm 32 almost. And I think she's 20, 20 something, yes. So I read Melancholia, Metamorphosis de una Ilusión Política. And this is basically about how the political movement in Spain, uh, especially, have been getting more and more melancholic toward a past that wasn't maybe as great as they want to remember. Um, how we can fight against this melancholy and how we can um, be hopeful toward the future and and try to not get stuck in a glorified past on a political level. Then I read last Elisa Riera comic book, which is La Stirpe Fracasada. Uh, that would be the failed dynast dynasty, dynasty, the failed dynasty, I said, which is uh, hard to read. It took me months. It's not super long, but um, these are like um, short stories in comic book format about different members of a same family. And they, they're, yeah, basically a group of rich people that are not as rich uh, anymore <laughs> and not doing as well uh, as they used to and it's hard to read because I hated these people with with a passion and Elisa Riera is great at um, creating characters that you just want to hate uh, yeah it was it was hard but kind of delightful uh, and in an annoying way. Then I finally read Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Um, I've only read up until then The Waves, which is one of my favorite books ever, not only by her. And I love it. Uh, I love The Waves so much. And Mrs. Dalloway, if you don't know, it's uh, basically the story of a single day in the life of Mrs. Dalloway, uh, which is a woman that on this day wakes up and does her little things and chores in order to have a party at the end of the day, which, of course, in 19th, no, 20th century London was like, evening what was like at seven. <laughs> Oh, British people, I love you. Okay, I absolutely love how Virginia Woolf writes um, inner monologue, how it flows beautifully, um, how she makes it look like it takes no effort to write, although I know it takes a lot of effort. And yeah, I absolutely love the analysis of, the, um, of society at that moment, um, the machismo, the social um, social differences it's so well written and how you were not a um, normal um, member of society and you have to uh, be put away if you were ill in any manner especially if it was anything not physical yeah absolutely stunning. Then I read a <clears throat> new release, Please Do Not Touch This Exhibit, by another one of my favorite all-time writers, Jen Campbell. This poem collection is mainly about the author's experience with IVF. How is that in English? Uh, yeah, when, when you go through a hormonal treatment doctors and all so you can get pregnant because it's the only way for you yeah that kind of thing you know fertility training treatment yeah i think it's that so that's mainly the thing i love especially how in this book there are a handful of poems 
that talk about the author's body as if it was a house, uh, going through these um, different stages of at an emotional, hormonal level and all. It's so well written. It's so well written. I love Jen Campbell. I highly recommend this book. Oh, also, I read later John Berger's Sobre el Dibujo, which in English was on drawing, I think. And it's precisely that, a series of writings, like um, non-fiction excerpts, um, a piece of one of his novels, um, letters, personal letters he wrote, and all of it on and around the act of drawing. And uh, I loved reading this book. I read it the first time when I was on my first year of university, when I was studying fine art. So then I enjoyed it more um, because it was about drawing. <laughs> but now I could enjoy it in, more like in the philosophy of drawing. Uh, Berger talks about and it's so fucking beautiful <laughs> how he talks about the act of drawing as, um, as an act of looking understanding, analyzing, and yeah, getting to experience on a absolutely deep level um, a person or an object or anything you, you draw. Uh, how drawing is basically about looking and looking very intently. Then we almost finished. I read another Lich Bardugo. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Alex Stern series and for now there are two but I think it will be a trilogy I read Ninth House and its sequel Hellbent these are about yeah, Alex Stern which is the protagonist main protagonist uh, which is a young girl that had a terrible <laughs> Terrible teenage years um, with experiences with poverty and drugs and um, being able to see ghosts, uh, which was uh, very traumatic for her. But uh, she she gets drafted. She gets drafted for the ninth house, which is a um, league Bardugo invented um, secret society of Yale. Uh, there are another. There are other societies in Yale that are uh, famous and notorious and very real. But this uh, ninth house is um, it's a fictitious one because they make sure that the other eight societies don't do um, too much magical, dangerous stuff. Of course, in reality, the other societies don't do dark magic, but uh, this is this is a, a fantasy, okay? This is not way I, and this is uh, Bardugo's first non-way I fantasy, and I absolutely love this. I'm obsessed with these characters, how they are created, and how the they talk to each other. The dialogues in here are absolutely amazing. Uh, I, I very much recommend it. This is Dark Academia, but with a bit of a bit of a twist, okay? Um, then I went back to poetry, as I've been doing all year long. <laughs> and I read Necesidad de un Río by Ivan Hernández Montero. And in English, the title would be Needing a River or The Need for a River. Something like that. Um, this is the poem collection that won the first Spanish eco poetry contest, and yeah, it's very much an eco poetry collection, pretty much centered around where Hernández Montero is from, Valle del Jerte, and all this area, beautiful, like very plain uh, area full of um, used to be. <laughs> 
full of rivers and many trees and now it's it's not as such obviously and it's a bit angry but it's um very appreciative and even the angry poems are uh, kind of beautiful because they are written from a place of deep care for ecosystem then sobre el amor by <laughs> i don't know how to pronounce this properly because this is a german author but rainer maria rilke um, and this is um, an anthology with um, his texts about and on love, different types of love. Um, there are poems, but also short stories. Um, I think there are a couple of letters. Yeah, it's a short book, beautifully um, edited. Yeah, the only thing was that... I loved the love poems. They are gut wrenching, romantic, but at the same time very real. Not a kind of a fairy tale, um, unreal love, but but love that could be I don't know um, from any person around you, you know. Um, but there was a short story that was very creepy, and. At first, when I read it, I was like, um, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this here? Because it's very much full of misogyny. And and the main character, it's it's not a gentleman. Um, but later I thought, well, I suppose it's kind of cool that they added a, a short story about toxic love. I guess it's it's love anyway. So yeah, and lastly, I actually finished the Eco Poetry Anthology by Anne Fisherworth and Laura Gray Street, um, which is uh, 6,000 pages long book, <laughs> hence why it took me many months. Um, also because uh, many of these poems are this kind of eco poetry that only deals with the landscape like oh it's so beautiful and i mean it's okay uh, like i say in my eco poetry workshop uh, i think we need as a society appreciative eco poetry but uh, it, it was kind of boring to me until i started reading these other poems that were more like in um eco ecological activism vein and I loved those and I I would recommend it if you're interested in this topic in this topic um, there are a lot of new authors uh, at least for me um, that do incredible things with the genre and yeah that was my last book and I don't know what else to say. Um, I hope you like this. I hope you get at least a few um, ideas for new books to read. That's all. I'll You'll hear from me, from me very soon. You will hear me. <laughs> you will hear of me very soon. And yeah, 